Yes, praise the Lord. I'm so happy to see Brother John from Scotland. He visit me in London to go out to witness, preach the gospel of Jesus, in the speaker's corner to the Muslims in the streets of London. And um, the Lord he brought us together. We've been praying, worshiping together, praying to the Lord. And uh, we have seen great things the Lord had done yesterday, because Carmel on Sunday. We have seen uh, the Muslims, how they manifest, how they react to the gospel we preach. It was so much fire on that, on that area. I've seen demons possessed by uh, demons possessed people. And I give thanks to God for giving us the strength to stand up for Jesus and preach salvation, forgiveness of sin. So uh, I'm so glad to see you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, I hope this will be encouraged for you, brothers and sisters. Don't be ashamed to get together, to pray together. This is the will of God. Jesus has prayed the prayer before he rise up to heaven. He said, Father, I pray for them, for those who have sent it unto me, that you might protect them, that you might make them to be one, as I and you we are one. So I pray for the exactly children of God, God is one. that they might be one, as Jesus and the Father are one. It is the will of God for us to be one. We visit one another, we have fellowship with one another. This is the Jesus has prayed that we might be one as the Father and the Son is one. So we will be one all together when we walk by the Spirit and we allow the love of God to flow on our hearts. Not to be ashamed of one another, but to love one another. So, please, this is the time that you should look for one another and get together and fellowship and worship and preach the gospel of Jesus. Two are better than one. Remember, two are better than one. You might feel lonely, you might go alone in your way, you feel rejected, but I tell you something, God has his children on this earth. You all need to know where they are. You need to find them. When you pray to God, God, I want to find a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ. I want to have some fellowship, some time together. God will answer your prayer. I have brothers in Christ. I never met them in my life. God touched their hearts. They are coming. They are blessing. They are blessing me spiritually. They are blessing me financially. Because they see the work that we do to serve our Lord. They see the dedication I have to serve the Lord. So every time I pray the Lord, to send someone to strengthen me, to bless me, the Lord answered prayer. You might feel lonely, but I want this to be a challenge for you. Pray to the Lord that you might send these angels to support you, to bless you. I pray to the Lord to send these angels to support me, to bless me. Brother John came from Scotland to visit me. Another brother came from Belgium yesterday. He came special to meet me. I didn't know he comes, but he knew where to go. He said, that's the place where Brother Marius is preaching. I will go over there. I didn't plan to meet him. He lives by faith. He came in London by faith. And he blessed me for my birthday. He has blessed me. So, this is Christian life. Moved by the Spirit. Moved by the Spirit. So I pray that from today, your life will never be the same. From today, God will strengthen you. God will send His angels to bless you, to support you, to strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. 
Be blessed. And see you again. Bye. Me and Mr. Tritzy. And we've been going out preaching. We've been to Speaker's Corner. And we met a very anointed brother of the Lord, Brother Marius. And uh, this man, God is using powerfully. So I hope that we can do a lot of ministry and uh, you can bless this brother as he's been living on the street and uh, he's needing financial help as well. But the Lord brought us to the very heart of his people here in London in Golders Green. Um, we were actually preaching to Muslims yesterday um, and to which a lot of them uh, say that Christians are idolaters and I said oh I'm not an idolater no 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 because that is the second commandment of God and uh, and so we a man they set a tripod up in front of me and uh, we, he interviewed me so it could be somewhere on YouTube but uh, I did get a little bit angry with him but I did correct him in the fact that the King James Bible believing Christians when we are born again, we don't have idols, not at all. And if you're involved in any religion, you might buy, if you're a Jewish, a Talmud, which is writings from the rabbis or other teachers. And again, this could be classified as idolatry because if it's not the pure word of God, then what is it? You know, it's uh, an interpretation or a doctrine of men. And so. Praise the Lord. He saved my life. He opened the sky. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give him praise and glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. He and the honor. You deserve the glory and the honor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What can I say unto the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. What can you say to the Lord today? What can you say to the Lord today? Thank you, Father, for my family. Thank you, Father, for my life. Thank you. Up and the sky. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A wonderful God. He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. He deserves the honor. He is worthy to be praised. I'm here to praise Him, to glorify Him, for He saved my life. For I shall live, I shall not die, and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the God I know, the God who healed the people, the God who saved people from hell, the God who gave life to the deaf, the God who healed the blind. That's the God I serve, hallelujah. That's the God I worship, hallelujah. This is a holy day. No.
not, more not. Tis a holy day, we not, more not. Worshipping him, worshipping God. The King David, the Bible says, he worshiped God seven times a day. In one day, the King David, he worshiped God seven times. He always praising the Lord. He was always worshiping Him with songs. And at the same time, he pray unto the Lord. Hallelujah. A man who worshiped God, a man who prayed to the Lord, To pray to God, to worship God seven times a day, it is a miracle. For you to be able as a man to worship God seven times one day, it must be a miracle. It must be a big miracle. So much dedication, seven times a day. I like the Muslim people. They pray five times a day, five times in 24 hours. They go mosque, they go homes, they bound their knee in the floor, their head in the floor for a few seconds, maybe five minutes. That's not enough. It is not enough to pray to God as an exercise. We have example King David who was worshipping God so hard, he cried to his Lord seven times a day. Seven times. And King David, a man who worships God, a man who is a king of Israel, he discovered himself as a sinner. The more you worship God, the more you pray to God, you find yourself as a sinner before God. Because God is holy. Because God is loving God. Because God is merciful God. King David, he found himself as a sinner before God. He was praying so much. He worshiped God so much. At the, day, at the end of the day, he discovered himself a sinful man who was praying to God for forgiveness. He asked God for forgiveness. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Clean my sins away. I was born in sin from my mother's womb. Clean me, O oh Lord. You might not discover yourself as a sinner before God because you don't pray to God enough. You don't worship God enough. But when you begin to worship God, to pray to God, you will discover yourself sinful man, sinful woman.
announced Jesus was. He was the Lamb who takes away the sin of the whole world. And me, my own testimony is, I came to him 20 years ago. I came to Jesus 20 years ago. I was a believer in God. I thought I was saved. I thought I was a good person. And then my grandmother died of cancer. And all the family, they turned against God. Why? This good, pure, nice lady die of cancer and they, they had bitterness towards God and yet she never complained she never said anything against God and three days before she died she rose up from her bed and she called the name of Jesus and three days later she died and that was the testimony that brought me to a knowledge of who Jesus Christ was Yeshua the Messiah of Israel and the whole world that is my testimony I ask God, do I need Jesus to enter into your kingdom, to enter into heaven? Because I understand that all religions teach that there is a heaven and a hell, except maybe if you're a Hindu. So, all the three major religions 
Islam, Judaism, Christianity, they teach that there is a heaven and a hell. And let's face it, if we saw heaven today, how many of us would want to go? Everyone would want to go. If we saw hell, who would want to go there? No one. No one would want to go there. And yet we read in the Bible, through the parables of Yeshua, that the rich man went to hell. And Lazarus, the poor man, who suffered most of his life, the angels took him up to Abraham's bosom. And he was nourished there. And that was Yeshua's parable about heaven and hell. And so too much is given, much is expected. And so not many of us are very rich in this world. But it's very important what we do with our riches. Because God will judge us according to the works that we do in this body. We know that that's referred to in the prophets, the prophet Daniel, and in the New Testament, the book of Revelation. It's very important what we do. But more than that, where is your soul going to go when you die? Where will your soul end up when you die? You know that there's rewards for the believers. Even if you're a Christian, and you say, well, I'm going to heaven, but you're not a very nice person. Yes, you could still get into heaven, but you're not going to get a very great reward. There's even Christians who could lose their salvation. Yes, it's true. I don't believe in the one saved, always saved gospel. I believe, as the apostles did, that when you accept Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you must walk as He walked. You must talk as He talked. You must do as He did. Because this pleases God. How many Christians today don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit? How many Christians today don't go around praying for people as Yeshua did, as the Apostles did? This is the challenge for the Christians today. To show the, the true character of God. What Yeshua did, who Yeshua is, the true physical representation of the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. That's what Jesus Christ said. And they crucified him. Because he said he was equal with God. And yet his followers went out and did even greater works than Jesus did. Look at what the apostles did. Look at what the apostle Paul did. Raised the dead, healed the sick, drove out demons. Which is the great commission today. So the question is, how is your relationship with God? Do you truly know God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is He living inside of you through the Holy Spirit? Even Christians today don't believe in the Holy Spirit, the Jehovah Witnesses, the SDAs, the Mormons, they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Many Christians, the Catholics, don't believe in the Holy Spirit. And so most of Christianity don't really follow according to the teachings of Yeshua. So don't be disheartened. Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel. But you get to know Him personally, through faith. Take a Bible. I believe we do have Bibles here. If you would like a copy. We try to use uh, the King James Bible. But it's not essential. There's other copies that we give out. And so also we're giving out flyers today. If you want to learn more about what we believe, or what we've experienced, we've written it down. We've also written down 20 prophecies from the Tanakh.